Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another viewer requested fundamental analysis video. It is getting really, really close, guys, to earning season. So, and I want to cover as many of these stocks as you guys have. So, we're going to spin the wheel and we're going to see what company we're going to be analyzing today. So, here we got the wheel, and uh, let's uh, do the spin and see who, what company we actually get. we got the company trmd now trmd was brought up by none other than tandit tandit here's the comment this is the one that you asked for three so guys let's get started with this company but before we do that make sure to like subscribe comment really does help with the algorithm on youtube as well as rumble make sure to follow us on x at fatal investing if you'd like to join our discord it is free link is in the description below so with that said guys let's get started with this analysis so guys, we have the company Torm. This is what the ticker is. And it's another shipping company. I, I have a feeling that these three that you gave me, Tandon, I think that they're all shipping companies uh, by the looks of it, right? By the looks of it. So this is a company that, um, honestly, I don't know anything about. This is the first time I'm looking at it. So let's go through the rundown of um, everything that we need to know about this company, starting, of course, with their company profile. So we got Torm PLC, a shipping company, owns and operates a fleet of product tankers in the UK. It operates in two operating segments, tanker and marine exhaust. The tanker segment transports refined oil products such as gasoline, jet fuel, kerosene, naphtha, and gas oil, as well as dirty petroleum products, including fuel oil. The marine exhaust segment engages in developing and producing advanced and green marine equipment. Torm was founded in 18... It was a really old company. 1889 and is based in London, in the uk so yeah there's nothing really much else to see here it's not a company it's they transport oil it's just another midstream uh energy company so yeah let's uh let's take a look at this further in their earnings so this is fairly interesting guys their earnings we don't really have much here it was supposed to come out on may 8th we don't have anything for the eps normalized actual nothing for the eps gap actual revenue coming in at 444.1 million a beat by 102.51 million dollars now the next one you guys can see it is on august 15th and uh they do have estimates a dollar 78 for the eps normalized estimate uh two dollars and three for the eps gap estimate and 325.12 million dollars one revision guys in total i mean it's to the upside but this is a company that it really isn't looked at at all so let's jump right into the calculator we got the ticker for trmd market cap of 24.6 billion dollars pe of na now i don't know if this is because it's a foreign company by the way guys foreign companies are really difficult to do for starters uh but it could just be the fact that their earnings are in negative Usually, that's what that means. Net income is in the negative. Current share price of $37.49. This on the one year is up 51%. Essentially, year to date, they are up 23.28%. 52-week range of $22.31 to $39.64. As of today, they fell 1.32%. By the way, today, it is July 11th. And um, yeah, post-market, they're up 0.72% or around 27 cents. Coming back into the calculator, they do pay out the dividend of $5.82, which is a whopping yield of 15.32%. Re massive red flag. That is a massive red flag. Anything above, if it's not a REIT, anything above like 6, 7, 8%, massive red flag. I'm sorry. It's just, it is what it is. So I don't like this. There is no payout ratio. There's no five-year CAGR, zero consecutive dividend years. If we take a look at the dividend history, uh, we can see that this is once again all over the place. I don't, I don't like this one bit, guys. I just, I really, really don't. I like company. I like, I like dividends for consistency, for hopefully a possibility of income. This ain't it. This, this is ain't it. So yeah, fifteen point three three two percent. It tells me that most likely that's that. Yeah, it tells me that they can't afford it. They really can't. In fact, wait until we see the pair ratios in regards to the free cash flow it's crazy exhibit the date pass as of may 21st payout date was on june 4th and they pay their dividends quarterly come back over here we can see that based off the current shares outstanding and this five dollars and 82 they pay out 536.6 million dollars take their 10-year average free cash flow they're left with negative 563 million dollars i don't have to say that that's bad right it's bad now take their last year's free cash flow it's 
negative 241.1 million dollars yeah i mean these payout ratios are just no <laughs> no <laughs> right just 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 absolutely not like 2059 okay yeah no absolutely not uh let's move on to now the numbers all righty so we got over here the net income guys 10 years ago of 13 million dollars to one year ago of 648.3 million dollars increase of 4887 percent okay this is all over the place you can see that they were positive sometimes but they had some times where they went negative like eight years ago they went negative uh six years ago they went negative three years ago they went negative and then a massive spike as of two and one year ago i don't like this one bit um I'm not going to give it like a zero because it's not consistently decreasing, but I'm going to give it 40% because I just, I can't make heads or tails of this. So it's a little bit worse than 50, 50. So I'm going to say 40%. Now the free cash flow, this is bad. This is real, real bad. Um, we got 10 years ago of 360, negative 360. You guys can't see that. Uh, negative 361 million dollars there you go to one year ago of positive uh 295.5 million dollars that is an increase of 182 percent with an average of negative 26.06 million dollars this has more negatives than the than the income most of these are in the negatives so i get that it isn't the positive as of two and one years ago i give this a 40 i'm gonna lower this because i just realized that there's a lot more negatives in general so guys I'm going to say, I'm going to have to say like a, like a 10% guys. It's just, it's really, really bad. Now the revenue, the revenue actually doesn't look too bad. We got 10 years ago of, you guys can't see that again, but it, it says, uh, it says 180 million. There you go. It says $180 million to today or one year ago of $1.52 billion. That is an increase of 744.67%. It actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, there's been more instances of consistency. Yes, it has gone down, but you can see that from eight to four years ago, essentially flat. So I'm going to give this guy a 75%. Now, assets minus liabilities. Here, the assets is a reference only increasing, especially as of uh, especially as of eight years ago, honestly. Uh, liabilities also look uh, very, really interesting as well. You guys can see over here, three to two decline, but then kept rising up. And lastly, the assets minus the liabilities Honestly, it doesn't look that bad, right? It doesn't look that bad. It's very consistently increasing from eight to today. So all in all, guys, I think I this is this actually isn't even that bad. Average full assets of 2.07 billion, liabilities of 961.33 million, and this difference of 1.11 billion dollars. I'm gonna give this a 90%. I like it. It's actually not that bad. Cash flow mass liabilities. If their cash flow is better, this would be a whole lot better. But guys, it's actually not even that bad by comparison of the liabilities. So you guys can see that, yes, it does have its instances of it going down. I'm uh, sorry, it, it does have the overall trend of it going down, but there are instances of going up. And while as of one year ago, it is negative $908 million. And the average, it is negative $939 million. I'm going to give this guys an 80%. It's not that bad at all. Now, shares of standing, this one it is it's bad. It's very bad. So not only... They're not consistently increasing it. There has been issues. There has been instances of them actually buying back. However, it's not what I like to see. We got 10 years ago of 39.6 million shares to today of 92.2 million shares, guys. That is a massive issuing of 132.83%. And from the previous year to the current year, another increase of 7.6%. I mean... There are instances of them keeping it the same, but man, that is massive, massive dilution. I have to give this guys a 20%. I'm sorry. I really, really do. And lastly, cash equivalents. They currently hold $544 million with an average of $178.35 million. Overall, though, when it comes to the weighted grade, it's a 46%. It doesn't even get to 50. The biggest problem here is the profit metric, especially the net income and the, the free cash is really bad. Free cash is really, really, really bad. I... Again, it may just be an industry thing by the looks of it. We just did the other one. I forgot what it was. INSFW. INSW. There you go. And you saw some something similar. So there you go. This is now a second one that is in a similar industry. It may just be that. It may just be that the industry is, is just the way that the net income and the free cash flow looks like in the industry. So yeah. Now, when it comes to the valuations, let's see what the discounted free cash flow says.
All right, so this kind of free cash flow right off the bat. Okay, these numbers look crazy. Almost three hundred dollars, two hundred ninety-six dollars and sixty-four cents. Not adjusting for debt, and then adjusting for debt, two hundred ninety-four dollars and sixty-eight cents. We gotta input some numbers here. We really, really do. So, so I think of course with the projected share buyback, they have been issuing at around ten point three one percent every single year for the past 10 years therefore i'm going to say for the lowest assumption guys let's say negative 12 again the negative just means issuing then let's say negative 10 which is the average and then let's say um let's go up by another two let's say negative eight now for the wow you can see those numbers fell a lot from 200 almost 300 to what is that 95 51 that's a lot guys that's a lot so revenue 19.66 the revenue has been kind of iffy a massive spike as of a few years ago so i'm gonna say roughly along the lines of like maybe 10 then <clears throat> let's go with that around like 12 and then like 14 i think that's fair maybe that's even a little bit too much because again remember that graph does not it was mainly as of recently when the spikes happened so maybe it's a little bit less in fact let's change that let's change this to like four again i understand this but this was mainly due for the past two years so let's say four then let's say six and then let's say eight i think that that's a little bit more fair now in regards to the required rate of return okay this is uh oof i don't know i'm gonna have to say the basic guys the basic 10 percent to match the market mainly because i do not know how a company like this will perform 10%, $46.75 to $91.71. Then adjusting for debt really doesn't change much. We got $46.12 to $90.80. Margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15. We got $39.20 to um, $86.26. So by the looks of it, we are still a little bit overpriced. However, we are getting close to uh, this 15% margin of safety. Right? It really just depends, guys, because let's just say that you did choose to put in the revenues that I originally put. So let's say 10, 14, and um, uh, sorry, 10, 12, and 14. There you go. Sorry, it's, it's a little bit late. 10, 12, and 14. Well, you can see how these numbers have changed. Does this mean that the company will hit that? No, but it does mean that this is what the value of the company should be if these things occur based off of my assumptions. Make your own assumptions, guys. Again, not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And if we take a look at these dividends, guys, with a 15.32%, it's not surprising what we're seeing here. With a monthly installment of $6,215, this nets you 165.78 shares, which is a yield of, dear Lord, $964.83 per year, a quarter this is $241.21 and per month it is $80. Absolutely crazy. Now, problem with this is that that dividend is not safe in my personal opinion. It's all over the place and when it comes to the history and the, the payout ratios in regards to the castles all over the place as well. So I don't think of it as a dividend play, but then again, if you guys want to invest in it, that really is up to you. I personally do not like it one bit. So all in all, thank you so much for the recommendation, Tandon, and uh, the wheel chose it. So there you go. Guys, again, I don't know anything about this company, the industry. I'm this is the second, I guess you could say third, because I've done Zim before, and that's kind of like a kind of the same thing, I guess you could say. Um, but honestly, the, this kind of industry, I prefer more midstream when it comes to like rail or when it comes to like trucks, not so much by boat. I feel like it's too weird for me. I really just feel like it's too weird for me. So tell me if this helped, Tandon. Um, I know you commented on the one I did before. Uh, you know. Hopefully this helped. I have the same opinion of this one, honestly. I really do. It may just be me because I don't have the knowledge of the industry. But yeah, maybe you do. Again, you guys make your own decisions for yourselves. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as Rumble. Make sure to follow us on XF Fail Investing. If you like, join the Discord. The link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out. And we'll see you all next time.